Hello everyone, I'm Lexi Ambrose from Savannah Stage Company, Director of Education, and I'm back again with Ashley Cook, Assistant Director of Education at Savannah Stage Company. And this is a little tutorial video on how to get started as a playwright. First question up. Many people are asking, you know, I've written stories before, so what makes a story look different than a play? How should I type this out on paper? Formatting. So, I brought along my trusty cabaret script to the play we just finished doing. Uh, the very first page, um, which is part of your 10 pages or your 11 pages, is uh, the cover page. The title of the play is in a large, bold, black font, and then underneath is whoever wrote it. Um, for you, we'd really appreciate a name, a grade, and a school. And because you've got some extra room on this page, if you'd like to provide a character breakdown, uh, your characters, and then just a short description of each character, and also a scene setting if you'd like. So a description of where your characters are. Then, get to the next page. At the beginning, you will have the scene title. So, which scene is this? Is this scene one, scene two, act one, act two? You can put that at the very top and uh, underline that in the middle. And then you're going to capitalize your character's name and provide their dialogue underneath. If you need to provide action that the characters do not provide in dialogue, the things that they say, then you can also add in, in parentheses and italicized, stage directions. So that is any action that needs to help further the story along for the audience and for the actors who will be reading this. Anything that the characters themselves do not describe um, with their words. And that's really just the basic start. Also, it is very important that you number your pages. If we print these out and we don't know how the story is supposed to go and we can't find the page numbers, then your story might end up being out of order. <laughs> so we don't want that to happen, so please remember to number your pages. Okay, moving on to question two. How do I structure this story that I'm going to tell? That's a great question. Many of you are familiar with a story structure, a beginning, middle, and end, and it's no different for a play. We always have a beginning, middle, and end. So your beginning are the events that lead up to the life-changing event in the middle. So beginning should be about two to three pages spent on the beginning events. Then we move on to the meaty part, okay? So this is where we have the life-changing event or our turning point. So you wanna spend a good chunk of your pages on this, probably anywhere between three to five. And then lastly, we have our end, and it's the resolution. What happens after the turning point or the life-changing event? And you're only gonna spend mm, one to three at max on those. Awesome, that sounds easy enough. Perfect. Okay, question number three, Lexi. We've heard about all the things that we should do in playwriting, what should we not do? A number one rule is do not copy someone else's work. That is not challenging, and it's just not fun for us to read because we've probably already read it. Um, also, not including things like guns and extreme violence. It's hard to pull off in a play, and it also takes the suspense and the air out of the play for the audience. Uh, banter is a big one. Things that the characters say to one another that don't hold much weight to the story, like, hey, Ashley, what's up? Not much. Yeah, so that doesn't really do anything to the story. Uh, that doesn't help further the action of what's happening in the story. So let's get rid of all of that and really focus on the meat, the juice, the juicy parts, the things that are going to highlight what is going to happen in the story. Just remember, this is not an ordinary day. Plays are not written about ordinary days. They're written about extraordinary days, extraordinary things happening. In those extraordinary days, we want to stay away from random things happening. So anything that's happening without a purpose. Uh, everything should have a purpose to further the action of the story, uh, to help the story along. Okay. And those are some things you shouldn't do. Sounds easy enough. Sweet. So, last and final question. 
We've already heard how to format our play, how to structure the story, and some things that we should stay away from when writing our play and our story. Um, now I wanna know, what are some things we absolutely must do? That's a good question, Lexi. And we at Savannah Stage Company like to use the acronym BIG. It stands for bravery, imagination, and growth. So bravery, don't be afraid to make bold choices. Put your heart and soul into the play and we will enjoy it. Imagination, be as creative as you possibly can. The more you use your imagination with the script, the more the audience is engaged and the better chance you have of winning that cash prize. And then growth, don't be afraid to push and challenge yourself. Go outside of your comfort zone a little bit. But most importantly, have fun. Have fun! Have a blast! This has been our tutorial on how to write a play. I'm Lexi Ambrose and this is Ashley Cook and we're with Savannah Stage Company and we can't wait to read your play!